I never thought my cow's crap could be turned into energy. But here we are. Right before our eyes, hiding in plain sight, in wastewater plants, farms, landfill sites, and industrial waste, lies a power source we've barely noticed. It doesn't shimmer like solar or spin like wind. It bubbles up from what we throw away. Organic waste, agricultural waste, even human waste. And when it's captured and upgraded, it becomes something deceptively simple, but complex, all at the same time. What's cooking, baby? Gas. But not just any gas. It's a renewable gas that's getting a bit of attention lately. It's called biomethane. Sounds peculiar? Denmark's already producing biomethane to help power entire towns and industries. Other parts of Europe, the US and the UK are scaling fast. And here in Australia, we're sitting on the raw ingredients, not buried in the ground, but hiding in plain sight. Every time we toss a banana peel or flush the toilet, we're not just getting rid of waste, we're discarding a potential energy source that helps to create biogas. Once treated, it then becomes biomethane. And just like natural gas, it can help power many of today's commercial businesses and manufacturing industries of all shapes and sizes. Same energy, different story. It's a renewable gas, created from what we normally get rid of. It can flow through the same pipelines, power the same systems, the same appliances and equipment. Only when it's used, it doesn't add more greenhouse gas emissions. This episode follows that transformation from waste to fuel and reveals why biomethane could be one of our smartest energy solutions. Not just because it's clever, but because it's circular, local and practical. So buckle up, because we're about to discover how waste, yes, even the stuff you flush, might just help fuel a renewable energy future. So, how does it work? Biomethane starts with organics. Food scraps. Farm and crop waste. And believe it or not, our own waste. Yes, sewage. That's right, we're even talking about number twos. You mean... Poo? Toilet humour aside, the fact that biomethane can flow through existing pipes is pretty handy. At places like Sydney Water's Malabar Wastewater Treatment Plant, waste streams are captured and funnelled into sealed digesters, huge oxygen-free tanks that break it all down. We'll explore this deeper in a future episode. What's left? is biogas, which gets upgraded to become biomethane, which I'm told by the experts has the exact same chemical composition as gas from the ground. But this is from a renewable source and is low emission, making it a more sustainable option. Biomethane, for all intents and purposes, is very similar to natural gas. It's actually interchangeable, can be used in the same appliances and in the same infrastructure. Yeah, biomethane comes from organic materials. So simple things like uh, food scraps, organic materials from farmland, even sewage from uh, wastewater facilities. Uh, biomethane can be produced from organic waste and residues through a process of uh, anaerobic digestion, which is the conversion of that organic material by mo microbes into biogas. That biogas is then simply cleaned up and processed, so then it becomes in interchangeable with natural gas. Anaerobic digestion, um, I like to think of it as something similar to what's in our stomach. So we feed it organic material. It's in a, a wet environment, it has no dissolved oxygen, and that allows for that organic matter to have a biochemical reaction that allows it to biodegrade naturally. Uh, and then from there, we form these commodities such as biosolids, and, and biogas as well. In fact, biogas then gets upgraded to biomethane. And that waste, that digestate, 
is a nutrient-rich fertiliser which can then be put back into food crops. Across parts of Australia's regional heartland, a quiet transformation is underway. Towns and regions, once known solely for agriculture, are now emerging as potential energy pioneers, tapping into resources that have been right under our noses all along. Farm waste and feed crops, agricultural byproducts like leftover crop stubble, organic residues and animal waste often end up burned, buried or left to decompose in open air. Agricultural residue is simply the leftover byproduct of another cropping activity, such as wheat harvesting and wheat production. So it's the leftover straw and material that's on the paddock after the primary product has been taken off. Somewhere between 24 and as much as 61% of agricultural waste stubble on the paddock is simply torched where it stands on an annual basis, depending on the season, the crop, the farmer, the paddock, a whole variety of factors. But there, the bottom line is there's a huge volume of waste agricultural resource, a residue that we can capture and use for energy purposes. So Valorify has done a lot of work to try and understand what the right sizing of facilities would look like. And, and through conversations with farmers, talking to agronomists and others, we've actually hit on a, what we think is the optimal scale of around 300 to 350,000 tonnes of straw per annum per facility. And that produces about four to four and a half petajoules of biomethane product, which is roughly equivalent to about seven and a half, eight percent of the New South Wales commercial industrial demand for gas. There's a whole host of, of fantastic benefits that emerge from a bioenergy project at scale such as this. It's, it's a story that hasn't really emerged in Australia, but, but it's, its time has come. If you look in other parts of the world where this adds value to regional communities, uh, it's a really exciting prospect for us to consider here in Australia. So it adds jobs uh, and, and regional GDP growth. It helps to diversify farm incomes. At the end uh, of a, a cropping cycle for some farmers in certain seasons, the management of stubble is actually a bit of a headache. It's a problem. It creates a new market and a diversification of that income uh, and certainty for farmers in planning around that cycle. Uh, it has lots of other benefits too through the avoidance of crop stubble burnoff, which can have all sorts of negative human health and environmental impact outcomes. So all in all, there's a series of cascading multiple benefits that are both economic, social, environmental, and also agricultural, agronomic, and can improve the overall production cycle for, for farmers. This shift has the potential to create additional revenue streams for farmers, could help create local jobs, and help keep energy solutions in the regions that generate the raw material. Oh, I think it'd be great for the town, a great idea. Anything we can recycle these days um, is great. And for the town, number one, if there was a facility around here that produced um, the biogas, then that will provide employment. Um, and, the, and of course, the gas as a substitute for natural gas could be utilised by local industries, etc. So it'd be a win-win be a, a as far as I'm concerned, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like not knowing the ins and outs of it, it's a little difficult for me to say, but I could definitely concede that that sounds like it's worth looking into, you know, if we're not already utilising that resource, then uh, yeah, turning it into energy sounds like a good idea. Whatever you can recycle locally, I think's a great thing because we produce it, we should get rid of it. And, and then people start to realise that all the wastage just doesn't disappear off the face of the earth and it's going to help along the way. It's not just farming and regional areas that can benefit from biomethane. Some of Australia's largest gas users are our biggest manufacturers and heavy industries. Think bricks, cement, steelworks, paper mills, tiles, glass, food and beverage production, even hospitals. Many of these operations rely on heat, real, round-the-clock, high heat, and they can't just plug into solar panels or a wind turbine to maintain it all the time. Many industry leaders and experts point out that biomethane is one of the few renewable fuels that can actually deliver constant, uninterrupted, high heat. It's proven to be reliable internationally and scalable. 
and for places like Brickworks, it's already on the table. In our Austral Bricks business, natural gas is really important to us. Natural gas is required to get very high heat temperatures to manufacture bricks, and the brick kilns are operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, electrification is not possible in our business, so you can't use electricity to get the really high heat temperatures that we get from natural gas. So natural gas is really critical for our business. What we really like about biomethane is it is a renewable form of natural gas and what that means is we can produce it today using existing technology that's widely used overseas in Europe. Biomethane as a renewable form of natural gas means that we don't need to make any changes to our plants and we don't need to upgrade our gas networks. From industrial heartlands to our everyday energy networks, what we waste doesn't need to be worthless. By creating awareness of biomethane as a substitute for natural gas, there's an opportunity in Australia to scale up the waste to fuel industry to help lower emissions. So stay tuned for the next episode where we peel back the curtain and show how biomethane production could help shape the energy mix of the future. You're watching Fuel for Thought.